Welcome to lesson two of macroeconomics. In this lesson, we're going to talk about gross domestic product. Um, gross domestic product is a very, very popular thing to hear about in the news. You hear about this a lot with politics. You hear a lot about it whenever you watch uh, anything on finance in the news, anything on the markets. Uh, th this is a factor that changes a lot, and it's a very important economic measure. It actually helps companies to make decisions and also helps individuals and households to make decisions on daily purchases. So gross domestic product is an overall measure of, a com of an economy's production of goods and services. It shows the health of an economy and how fast it's growing um, and it is useful in decision making for global economies. And the chart at the bottom displays um, a forecast that was produced by the uh, IMF for Canada and China showing the changes and the way this could be looked at is if you were going to decide whether to do business in China or Canada if you were a global company you would want to choose China. China is growing at a much faster pace than Canada. Canada is actually declining in the production of their country. So China would be on a lot better economic path than Canada. Other features of gross domestic product would be inflation rate. Um, inflation rate is a percentage increase in the average level of prices from one year to the next. Uh, different factors influence the inflation rate which we will look at in other lessons. Uh, GDP uses market values for measurement calculations not quantities. Uh, when looking at market value it looks at the value which is important as far as the sale value of the item. So whenever looking at a vehicle you're looking at what the total vehicle is worth not all the parts that are produced within a country to create the vehicle. Um, value is a key part of GDP. When measuring total production within a macro economy we measure production by taking the value of all services and goods that an economy produces. Uh, other factors are listed at the bottom. Um, it does not include values of intermediate goods. Intermediate goods would be tires. Uh, tires would be an intermediate good, while a final good would be a vehicle or a piece of machinery that a tire would go on. So a final good is something that's ready to go to the cons consumer and be used, um, not a component and that's where you look at the value from that standpoint of it. GDP also includes production that takes place during the indicated period of time. So GDP is only a measure of the current production. It only measures production in the current fiscal year. Um, macroeconomic analysis provides information that consumers and firms need in order to understand current economic conditions and to help predict future conditions. A family may not want to buy a house if employment in the economy is declining because there is a risk that family members within that family might not be able to hold down a job long enough to be able to pay for the house. Then they would be uh, risking not be able to pay the bills. Same thing for a company. A company might be more reluctant to, uh, to invest in building a new business or expanding to other areas of a market if the economy is not growing at a safe rate they might think of it as too risky and not want to invest in that market which could overall hinder other companies final goods and services as we talked about earlier are the ones that are produced by uh, are purchased by the final user and are not included in the production of any other good intermediate goods are goods like tires and final goods would be the tractor listed at the bottom left. GDP measures goods that are final but do not include the intermediate goods in the calculation. That is important. Uh, this is a circular flow model of income and output. This basically summarizes the overall uh, cycle of products within an economy and the income of households. And a circular flow diagram shows the flow of spending and money in the economy 
uh, firms sell goods and services to three different groups and we will show those in just a few minutes um, in order to purchase goods and services firms will use factors of production like labor capital and natural resources uh, which are on this chart and when using those they will create products which will then go to households and this chart also displays how households build income and then spend that income on the products produced by the firms so it's kind of a life cycle of how products are created produced and then ran through a market um, companies sell goods and services to three groups of the economy as we said and those three groups would be domestic households, foreign companies and households, and governments. Uh, we can measure GDP from the amount of total income a household receives. So whenever we were looking at the chart, we could measure total household income, which would then show how much the products would be purchased for, or more of an estimate of the life cycle of products. So then we would know how much needs to be produced. I uh, hope this lesson was helpful. In the next few lessons on GDP, we'll be, be going over gross national product, uh, the equation for gross domestic product, actual values uh, with the equation, and components of GDP. Uh, if you liked our tutorial, please join our channel.